Let's see how to add tags to our mod for better compatibility. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add tags to our mod. And we have seen tags previously where we needed those for the tools and basically what tools to use to actually mine certain blocks. And now we're going to add our own tags that are both inside of the data folder as well as they are able to be referenced inside of the actual code as well. So for that, we're going to create a new package, right click package and then util. This is inside of our tutorial mod package right here. And in there, we're going to create a new Java class called the mod tags class. And this class will actually have two static classes inside of it as well. So this is going to have a public static class called blocks. And inside of here, all of the block tags will go and then we'll also have a public static class called items where all of our item tags will go. We're actually not going to use those in this actual tutorial right now, but we're going to basically create everything. And we're also going to explain why this is really useful for basically compatibility with other mods because you can also create forge tags. So we need two methods. We're going to need two methods in here. One of them is going to be the private static tags dot I optional named tag of type block, of course, in this case, which is going to be created called create tag. And this takes in a string parameter called name. And then let's hover over this and press alt and enter to get the net Minecraft world level block class imported here as well. And here we're just going to return block tags dot create optional new resource location. And then we're going to pass in our tutorial mod mod ID and the name given in the parameter, All right? So this creates an optional tag, meaning that you actually don't necessarily have to have the JSON file in your in your tags folder, which we're going to create in just a little bit. And we can also see if we take a look at the block tags once again. You can see there are a bunch of tags in here already. So those are basically all of the tags that are already in the game. And those are all of the vanilla tags. There are also some other tags which are under tags, tags dot blocks dot. And then you can actually see all of the forge tags that are already inside of the game that you can also reference within the code in theory. But the second method, we can actually just copy over the first method and we can just create forge tag. So we rename this to create forge tag because in this case, this is going to be a forge tag. And the only difference here is that the resource location is not going to be our resource location, but it's going to be forge. So this then creates a tag under the forge namespace. And we're going to see that in the items just shortly because there it's actually very interesting to add tags to the forge tag and then use them as well. So what we can do is we can just take both of those methods and copy them over. And then we only need to change this here to item, for example, then we need to change this to item tags, actually, so this one, and then this is going to be changed to item tags as well. And then we need to all import this. So import right here, import item tags, there you go, this one, and then here it's an item as well. And now everything should work. And now we can actually create a new tags that we can then reference inside of our code. So for example, we could add the public static final tags dot and then I optional named tag of type item. And this is for example, the titanium underscore ingots. And this is equal to a new forge tag in this case. And this is going to be ingots slash titanium, uh, something like this. So we don't necessarily need this. However, this enables us to reference this tag inside of our own code. Right. So this is one why this might be important. So if you, for example, have your titanium ingot and you're like, hey, I want to do something with it in the code for whatever reason, you want to right click something, then instead of actually taking the item that you have, you can also say, hey, any titanium ingot is also going to work with this. And the reason why this is like really cool and why we actually want to add things to our tags is because when we add those to the forge tag here, if another mod adds the titanium ingot, then we could use that for, well, stuff in our mod as well. So the idea is that when we, for example, take a look at the following. So if we can, for example, go into our recipes into the titanium block right here. And here we're currently referring to a particular item. However, we can also refer to a particular tag. So we can say this and then ingots slash titanium. And now this will actually refer to the titanium tag, meaning that if we add another mod inside of the mod pack, then we can also use their titanium Granted, they also, of course, have to add their titanium ingots to this tag. But if they do that, then we can use their titanium as well to create our block. So that's what I meant with compatibility. That's the real cool thing. Of course, we still need to add the tag file as well. So inside of our data folder, right click new directory called forge and inside of there, right click new directory called tags. And then inside of there, make a new directory called ingots. And then finally, in there, right click new file called titanium.json. This is a normal tags file, so we can just copy over 
the contents of another one and then just put in the tutorial mod colon titanium underscore ingot. Now it's very important, of course, everything is available in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists. So you can also copy everything over from there. It's very important. What I wanted to mention as well is you don't necessarily need this mod tags class in here. This only enables you to refer to your tags that you basically create and the optional tags in the forge namespace basically allows you to reference those as well. So this is not necessary necessary. This doesn't generate anything or anything like that. It is just there so that you can also use your tags inside of your code. One example I've seen is someone wanted to make a recipe that returns a random thing when actually being crafted. And I said, well, you could either make a custom recipe serializer, but that might be very hard. Or you can just return one of your tags. So if you have multiple items in your tag, you can also call the actual tag dot get random item from this tag. And that also would work. So that's one of the applications where you can use those tags in, for example. And I actually made a tiny mistake. So this doesn't go into ingots. This actually goes into the items tag. And then you put it into ingots. Otherwise, when you take a look at this one, it's actually not being recognized as an item tag. So that's why this didn't work. And now after fixing that tiny mistake, we can see if it works. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft and I've already prepared a crafting table here and let's see. So as you can see, the titanium ingot to the titanium block crafting recipe still works totally fine, even though instead of using the particular item, we're now actually using the tag. So that's actually how easy that can be. And I also want to refer once again to the external libraries here to NetMinecraft Client Extra 117.1 to the tags. This is basically where all of the vanilla tags from Minecraft are saved at. So in the items, you can see there are a bunch of tags in here. And if we were to, for example, take a look at the recipe, for example, for the crafting table, you can see that here a tag is also used because of course you can craft the normal crafting table with any plank that you basically have in the game. So this is why this uses the planks tag in this case. And the same thing works with our crafting recipes just the same. So this is why this works. And if I were to add any other item here into this tag, then you could also craft the titanium block with it. So that's maybe something that you can try just for the, you know, just for laughs or just for a goof, just add any item in there. And if you add nine of them inside of the pattern, then you will also get a titanium block. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. Remember, all of the code is available in the GitHub repository or in individual gists, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.